Aloha! In this video, we're going to share how to get a passport for a baby, minor, or child in the United States of America in 2021. One, two, three, Aloha! Aloha. We are Kencho Quest. We travel to open our minds and our hearts. Let's express around the world! We just applied for a passport for our newborn baby. Our son, who's seven, is already on his second passport. How many countries has he been to? Korea, Japan, Thailand, Singapore, the United States. And our daughter, who's almost three, is still on her first passport. The process we're going to share in this video applies to any minor child under the age of 16. And when they're under 16 years old, then their passport is valid for five years. Only five. We're currently preparing for our next international trip so we'll have a lot of related videos coming out soon, such as essentials to pack when traveling with a baby or kids. Be sure to subscribe. For the official information on getting a passport for United States citizens, make sure you check out the travel.state.gov website. We will put a link to it in the description and please reference it because you don't want to distrust us. Things can change. First up, does the baby even need a passport? If you'll be taking your baby to travel internationally, the answer is yes. I see this question asked quite a lot in traveling with kids groups, and yes, even babies need their own passport. So here's how to apply for a kid's passport. First of all, you need to fill out form DS-11. This is for everyone, not just children's or babies. Everyone needs to form, fill out form DS-11. You can either fill this out with ink, but instead we recommend that you either go to the website and download the PDF and fill out the PDF, or even better yet, fill it out online. However, you cannot submit your passport online. This is just so that you can type in all the information and then go through it and make sure everything's correct and then convert it into a PDF, download and print it, which is what we did. And the reason why I recommend you do this is so it's completely legible. You don't, you want, you don't want- You, you don't, don't want his handwriting. You don't want my handwriting, <laughs> exactly. So you want to make sure the people at the Passport Center can read your information and that you will have no delays. So, have it printed. Once you have that form filled out, the next step is to prepare the supporting documents you'll need to go along with it. The first thing you will need is to show proof of U.S. citizenship. And probably the best form is to provide a birth certificate because the birth certificate shows who the parents are as well as where the baby was born. And another tip is if you are ordering your birth certificate, get two copies. That way you can have one for yourself and then you could submit one at the passport office. They'll return it to you when you get your passport. Make sure you bring the original birth certificate and a printed copy. You will need to submit both of these. Next step, you'll need to prove parental relationship. So that's why a birth certificate is so great because it can also prove that you are that child's parents. Both parents should be present for the appointment at the passport office and the parents need to bring proof of ID. So that could be a state ID card with a photo on it, such as a driver's license, or we both brought our passports along with us. And you also need to bring photocopies of those too. Yes, so the parents' IDs, both parents present, and photocopies of the parents' IDs. You pretty much need photocopies of all the documents. So photocopy everything. When you bring your photo ID, when you make the photocopy, make sure that it is at least the original size or larger. They will not accept something if it is smaller than the original size. Parental consent is required from both parents, so that's why it's important that you both go along with your child to the appointment. However, there are some exceptions for extreme circumstances where both parents or guardians can't be there, so if you fall into one of those categories, be sure to check the official rules. Next, you're going to need to bring at least one copy of a 2x2 two two photo of your child and it needs to be in color with a white or clear background. They're a little bit more lenient with babies compared to other kids. It can be hard to try to hold baby up in front of a white background. We tried that. Not so easy with a newborn, even though he can hold his head up on his own. So they allow you also to lay a baby down on something white. We used a white bath towel or you could even put like a white sheet over a car seat and put them in a car seat and take the photo like that. So that's special circumstances if you're taking a picture for a baby because that is the hardest part of getting a baby's passport is getting that photo. We always like to do our own photos at home, 
but you could go to a professional if you find that easier. Right. And by the way, this is the only part that is different in the passport process for any child all the way up to the age of 16 is that babies, their photos can be a little bit different. Everything else is the same. We usually just get the photos printed on our own. So you did Walgreens this time, right? Mm -hmm. You could also do Costco. You make sure that they're the right size. So they're going to print out that two by two inch. But of course, if you go to somewhere that takes passport photos, they'll handle it for you. But don't attach your photo. If you look at this, diagram here it says attach photo here you don't want to do that <laughs> wait till you get to your appointment appointment are you supposed to have one of those maybe so technically you should go online and make an appointment that'll make it faster and easier but we asked at our local post office if we could just show up without one and the clerk there was really nice and said if we came right when they opened for passport processing at 11 a.m and if there weren't too many other people with families who had appointments, then she may be able to squeeze us in. So luckily, we were able to get ours done without an appointment. But you probably should make an appointment. If you can. Next up is passport fees. How much is it gonna cost you? A lot, unfortunately. The passport fee for the book itself is $80, and you also have to pay a $35 execution fee, which is basically a processing fee. Now what's interesting here is you have to pay this separately too. So when you pay the passport fee of $80, you are making a check payable to the United States Department of State. So, so, so bring a checkbook along with you. You cannot pay with cash. You cannot pay by card. Check only. Now, when you pay that $35 fee, depending on the processing center where you're taking it, they'll probably be able to take card. Now, if you want to get that passport processed faster, the expedited fee is $60. In addition to the $60, you can pay a fast return delivery to you, which takes one or two days, and that costs an additional $17.56. One thing to take in consideration, though, is that does not speed up the process of your passport application. All it does is once they are done processing your passport, they will return it to you much faster within one to two days. We originally were going to pay the $60 expedited fee to get the passport application processed faster, but the clerk talked us out of it. Because we are lucky to be in Hawaii. They actually do their own passport processing right here on the island. And she said we would get them super fast, no longer than a month. So hopefully that's true. Hopefully that's true. <laughs> we also recommend that you get the large passport book. I don't know if you can see the difference here, but this is a fat one here and this is a thin one. So the large one has 52 pages and the thinner one has 28. There's no extra charge for it. So I say you might as well get the fat one, especially if you're going to be traveling a lot. They're no longer adding additional pages when you're in a foreign country, so you need to get it while you're still here in the United States. And when you do get your passport in the mail, your, your supporting documents may come with that or they may come separately in a separate envelope on a separate day. I just want to re-emphasize that when applying for a new passport, there is currently no way to do that completely online. You need to go in person to a location that accepts passport applications, which most often is a post office. And just to be clear on that, that is for applying for a new passport. If you are renewing your passport, you can do that through the mail. And while you're waiting for that passport application to process, you can watch our Travel Tips 2021 playlist. Be sure to subscribe for more travel tips and inspiration. Aloha. <laughs> Okay.